Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to look at how we can create this animated background effect using TypeScript. Essentially what we're going to be doing is taking all the JavaScript out of here, which uses jQuery, and then we're going to be updating it to work inside a TypeScript and React project. And I'm going to be using this Create React App TypeScript starter. So I've got a one-liner here that's uh, npx create react app. That just means I don't have to have create react app installed globally. That's available with node 8.2 or greater, I believe. And then animated background tutorial is the name of my project. And then this specific script to run the TypeScript equivalent of create react app. So I'm going to hit return and let that one run in the background. So essentially what we're doing is this, uh, this migration of this JavaScript, but just as a quick heads up, you can do this without JavaScript. You can do this purely in CSS. This isn't to sort of argue the benefits of either approach. This is purely to show that that's possible and also just because the exercise is quite interesting. Now there's quite a lot of mathsy style stuff in here and I'm not the most mathsy person, but don't worry, we don't really need to understand the maths. The interesting thing here really is the migration from sort of older or ES5 style JavaScript and jQuery into ES6 and beyond with TypeScript. And before going any further, I'd like to give a big thank you to Mario Kleinerman. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Without this code, this video wouldn't be possible. So thank you. So the installation process is finished. So I'm just going to change into the directory there. I'm going to do a yarn start and that should be pretty much all we need to do. We don't need to do any ejecting at this stage, but I am going to tidy up this project a touch. So I'm just going to jump into the source directory. I'm going to delete the logo. I'm going to clear out the app TSX, just leave it as a div for the moment. Get rid of that as well, otherwise that will fail. And I'm also going to clear off the contents of app CSS. It should just get us back to a completely blank project. Okay, let's just stick anything in there. Now for simplicity's sake, we could do everything inside the app, but I'm not going to. I'm going to create a brand new component, but what I might as well do is just take a copy of the app as it's pretty much bare bones anyway. I'm just going to call it animated background TSX and just update a couple of these as well. And I'm also going to create an animated background CSS file. As there will be a touch of CSS in this, as we can see, we're pretty much just going to copy across what we've got in here. So let's do that now. Let's pop that in there. We don't need the body stuff. And now it's not going to be a div with an idea of gradient. We're just going to have this as a class. I'm going to go with animated background with starting with uh, a capital. In fact, I put that in the wrong one. Let's just copy that across. I'm not entirely sure what the correct convention is, but the following the TypeScript convention that's come with this project, they've started their classes with capital. I typically don't, but because their projects do, I'm just going to follow along with what they've got. So my animated background component is basically just a copy paste of what we had in the app. I've still got this hello, so what I'm going to do is get rid of the hello out of there and I'm going to use the animated background component in here. Now we should still be in roughly the same shape. Of course TypeScript's kicking off that I've done that wrong. Let's just shift that round and we're good. Now the linter is a little bit hardcore, so if you don't like some of the rule choices that it's come up with, you can always change them. I actually quite like the fact that it's quite strict. So just to very quickly review what we've got in our animated background, we've got a simple div with a class. We've got some text in there so that we can see anything really pretty much. And we've got these uh, bits of style. Essentially, it's going to be a full width thing and we've given it some height so that it actually displays something. But so far, it's pretty much uh, it's pretty pretty basic to be honest. So back inside Mario's code pen. We've got all this JavaScript here and it's a little bit tricky to see to be fair with the tiny amount of screen real estate that I've got available. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a full copy and paste all of this into my project. And the only real way to do this to begin with without creating a ton of errors is to drop it directly inside the render method. See if we can just get a touch more screen real estate going on. Okay, so we've got a bunch of things that we're going to need to address immediately. Straight away, we've got these four variables here that look like they might be constants. They might not be, but as we go through, perhaps we can move away from using var. And we'll start off with the setting them as const, but we'll come back and maybe try and do some tweaking on that. So I'm going to just change them off there with the in selection flag. Now I'm going to get rid of these comments as well, just because 
of the lack of screen real estate again I would not really advise removing the comments if you were doing this for your own project but yeah as I say that's that's the reason why so we're looking at this we can see that there's there's basically one major function here we've got update gradient which seems to do most of the work and then we've got this set interval which is calling the update gradient every 10 milliseconds so there must be something inside here that's tracking some state so that the next color combination can be determined what that's telling me is that one of these four here is probably not a constant it's probably a variable that's that's changing on every loop iteration but having not written the code I'm not immediately certain or sure which one that might be it's something that will come up as we keep working through the code so we've pretty much just got this one function that's the primary cause of our problems or at least the primary cause of the stuff that we're going to need to work through and we can see that this does some interesting things so disregarding this line for the moment we can see that we're setting up some color information this is probably how we're working out what the next color combo should be we're doing some mutation against whatever element has the id of gradient interestingly we're setting the background twice there it's going to cause us problems i should imagine essentially though that is two calls because we've got css there and then we've also got this chain one here so that is two different calls and then we've got this the hard part i guess which is the the color transition to work out what the next color should be so webstorm is actually going to pick up on a few of the problems immediately it's going to say that we can't find something called dollar well that's because we don't have jquery in our project and likewise then we can't use that here so i'm just going to comment this bit out because we're probably going to need some of that stuff in the future but I don't need to check to see if jQuery is there as I know jQuery is not going to be here it's not going to be part of the project so just get rid of that guard statement so this immediately brings up some further problems is that color one is declared but its value is never read in other words we're declaring these variables color one and color two but we never do anything with them I think that's quite nice quite a nice little benefit of using TypeScript we're, we're seeing straight away what's what we're doing that's basically pointless in a way so one thing that you might thing to do is just well if we just comment that out then what happens well then it's telling us straight away that all these values are declared but never used and we can keep doing that obviously and dropping these out now if we did the same thing here then it just basically kicks us back and keeps kicking us back until it's basically saying we've done a load of stuff that's completely pointless so there's kind of an easy way to to satisfy this and that's to actually return these two values from somewhere and that somewhere is just going to be another function so this isn't really typescripty at the moment but we're getting there so we're going to do a determine next color combo now i'm using the uk english version of color which is not how it's used here so that may come back to kind of haunt me but we shall see and i'm just going to take all of this stuff out and i'm going to pop it into this function i also want that on another line but the interesting thing here is the reason i can do that is because this next step here never actually uses any of this stuff directly so these essentially can be split out into two different functions and then what this allows me to do is just return an array containing color one and color two assuming of course that i spell them using the right the english variation so given that we know that this is going to return an array with two different color strings in there so these are both going to be strings what we can do is we can declare the return type as being a tuple containing two strings now what this is doing is it's going to tell us that this is a declared function but we're never using it so what i'm going to do is just call it from the update gradient function that should satisfy typescript sufficiently and even though we've still got a lot of stuff that's going wrong here uh, we're making some some sort of progress so let's see if we've got any sort of uh, comp compilation errors which we definitely do so not too worried about that at this stage but it's nice to see that at least it's not moaning about this it, it was moaning about that now we can see that the update gradient function is reliant on bits and pieces of state such as these color indices which are coming from here or from there sorry and also an array of colors which is using for the colors that length and here we're also we were interested in that state as well and it's kind of interesting how this works it's all to do with closure so because this function is contained inside this parent function update gradient 
has access to all the variables that are in the scope of the render method. Likewise, because determine next color combination is called from update gradient, that function has access to all the variables in this function and that function because they're in the parent scopes. That's a bit of a mind bender with JavaScript, but it is a little bit unusual how some of this stuff is working without us having to declare stuff directly inside each function. So if you've never come across that before, that's quite an interesting thing to look into in terms of JavaScript's closures. So we've got a const of step here, step zero, and this is probably telling us now that it's a read-only property. So maybe we're gonna set this to let, see if we get a little bit further. Okay, so we're not getting any errors at this point. We're not getting any underlined red stuff, but then it's coming up and saying, actually we're using var everywhere, but please use either let or const. Well, let's see if we can't do the same thing here. We've already got this set up, so I'm just gonna do a replace all on there. See if we get any further. Okay, variable names must be in lower camel case, Pascal case, or uppercase. Okay, so interestingly, the, the CSS that we came across before must be called Pascal case. Um, I didn't know that, but fair enough. And what this is actually moaning about is the names of these here. So C0 underscore zero is not a valid TypeScript variable name. So I'm gonna do a little, little cheeky update here. Just do C0 like that, that should cover now let's take off words there. This should, should be able to do this all in two steps, essentially anything C0 underscore and then C1 underscore. Do a replace and C1 and C1. Okay, should be good, even though the variable names are quite confusing. Because this is all contained inside one component, I'm not too worried about that. Okay, comments must start with a space. Where are our comments? Okay, so we've got some comments here that are sort of failing. Let's give this another shot. Okay, so we're back to a bit of rendered output. We're not actually seeing anything of interest as such, but at least it's compiling. So we'll get onto some more interesting stuff in the very next video.